you're on. Hi, everybody. It's Columbus Day, and this is Kathy L. Murphy reporting live on Caddo Lake with Captain Ron Holloman on his boat tours that lead from Big Pines Lodge. And the one thing I love about Caddo Lake is there was a story written here that's the East Texas Gone with the Wind, and it's called Love is a Wild Assault. It's by Elise Elise Hamilton Kirkland, and you all, I found a signed first edition copy at Hangers of Hope in, in Tyler, Texas for $1.99. So I want to share the story, and this is told by this woman in her latter years. A letter to my grandchild, Harriet Ann Purcell, New Orleans, April 15, 1890. Dear Tricky. You have just left my room, an eight-year-old child, but this letter is for you to read as a grown young lady. Since it is the privilege of our old age to see visions, I am now addressing Harriet Ann, a renowned New Orleans beauty. It will not be your Uncle Edward's way to let you go unnoticed. Suitors are the biggest concern of your life at this time. You would like to discuss your various admirers with me. You would like to ask me many questions about men and their ways. It is my intention that in my experiences and opinion recorded, have you will find some of the answers before you marry. Let me say right off, watch out for the young man with the heroic face and the hungry hands, with the look of lost dreams in his eyes and a great need. He may be another Solomon Payne. I want you to know all about Solomon. Well, this story uh, goes on, and this letter is quite long, but this story goes on, and it tells a story about the first white woman who settled right here in Caddo Indian Country back when this land was basically just like it looks today, right here in the Cypress Bayou with all the little knobs and stops coming up out of the water. But I'm just going to begin with just the first <coughs> chapter of this because you start this book and you will not be able to put it down. As Harriet continued the preparation of the letter manuscript that she intended for a post-mortem confidence with her granddaughter as a young lady, she found her days filled with an unexpected rest. Looking out over her life from her vantage point of purpose at old age was like viewing from a height something examined heretofore only at eye level. At any time when she could be alone and pick up her pen, the story flowed from her mind to the page in a steady stream of writing. She would bring her mind to focus on any part of the scene like a spyglass and it would leap into clarity through all her se senses. When she did pause occasionally and held the pen in idleness. It was not in an effort of recalling, but a pleasure of reliving, an indulgence of the sentence. Now, when she is fully rested at night after a few hours sleep, as been the case for many years, she did not lie in self-imposed apathy waiting for daylight. She rose in happy stealth, made for and light and continued her work. If Marcus wondered what so often became of the wood that she left ready for the morning fire, he was too considerate of her privacy to inquire and too aware of her cheerful disposition to be concerned. Addie, with no knowledge of her mother's nighttime activity and busy in her own affairs, accepted the explanation that Harriet's contented seclusion was a preoccupation with copying some family papers and piercing a velvet and satin log cabin quilt for Tricky. Harriet kept the quilt close at hand to work on when Tricky and other callers were around, but no one observed her slow progress on it. Harriet approached the story of Mr. Howard, feeling like a patron of the theater taking a choice seat at a familiar but ever exciting performance. Well, I could go on and on about this book. As you can see, the wonderful illustration of Caddo Lake where we're riding down now and the fabulous picture of the author on the back. And Tamara, tell us please, you said you got to meet the author. I never did. 
But I, I do have a signed copy of her book. I have two, in fact. So did you get to meet her? Yes. And I what was that like? Well, she was very old at the time. She was. It was just a couple of years before she died, and she was in her 80s. She was a gracious Southern lady. I mean, she she was just elegant and uh, very plain spoken, just like her book, but uh, had perfect words. You know, she was a very sweet lady, seemed like. But she was also uh, a little reserved. You could tell. You know. You know, years ago. Uh, when I first discovered the book, I actually it was about 33 years ago when I moved to Jefferson, Texas. Uh, it was one of the first books I read, and I remember Dr. Terry's wife, uh, Lucille Terry, who was a member, one of the founding members of the Jefferson Garden Club. She told me to read the book, and when I read it, I had never read anything like it since Gone with the Wind. It's the East Texas Gone with the Wind, mm -hmm. and when I had the author and television writer Linda Bloodworth Thomason come and stay with me for a week. I gave her a copy of the book and I said, Linda, you should make this into a film because she did Designing Women and Evening mm -hmm. Shade and um, she wrote a wonderful book called Liberating Paris and she took the book and I crossed my fingers that it would happen, but it's never been made. So if anybody's watching this on YouTube, anybody that's looking for a story that is one of the most unforgettable historical sagas. I won't even go into the panther that stalked their home or the Indians who roamed around their property, but she was married to a man that was with the Texas State Legislature and he left her alone with her children. And it's a story about, a woman's story about how she settled here in Caddo Lake. So, Thank you for listening, and now back to Ron Holloman, our captain. Yes, sir. Where are we? We're going down the government <laughs> ditch, you all. I'm enjoying this. Keep reading. I'll read this. Oh, I can <laughs> read for dice, but I don't want to. I want everybody to have the teas, but this is beautiful, Ron. I feel like I've gone back in. Well, it looks a lot like when Harriet Potter. Harriet Potter lived here. And there's Potter's Point that you can still go out to. And I'll show a... you how to get there. Okay. He's going to show us how to get there. Is it very much further? That's a good ways, but I'll show you the boat road to take. It'll take you right by there. All right. Hey, do you think you could get a picture of all of us with this 